Hello sports fans, this is Anthony with BBSN and after a busy weekend getting stuck with many honeydew projects, we are poised to resume our 1922 Brown Strat Time Machine replay and excited for uh, this next series of games. This is a much anticipated matchup against the Bronx Bombers as the Browns make their first visit of the season to New York. And this promises to be an exciting series. And the Yankees are the teams that the Browns have their sights set on in the American League East. So without further ado, we will get to the lineups. Leading off for the visiting Browns, Jack Tobin in right field. Frank Ellerby will bat second and play third. First baseman George Sisler bats third. Ken Williams will hit cleanup and be in left. Baby Doll Jacobson in the fifth spot will be in center field. Second baseman Marty McManus will bat sixth. Hank Severide will hit seventh and will be catching. Pat Collins steps in for Chick Shorten and will be the designated hitter tonight and hit eighth. And batting ninth, shortstop Wally Gerber. And for your home standing, New York Yankees leading off in center field, Mick the Quick, Mickey Rivers. Thurman Munson will be behind the plate and hit second. Reggie Jackson will be the designated hitter tonight and bat third. Chris Shambliss will be clean up and play first base. Lou Pinella will be in left field tonight and hit fifth. And Lou is the only difference from the Yankees as played lineup against Toronto for April 18th, 77. As... Uh, Carlos May was not carded for the Yankees, and he got the start in this one in left field. At the hot corner tonight and hitting sixth, Greg Nettles. Roy White will be in right field and hit seventh. Batting eighth, second baseman Willie Randolph. And bringing up the rear of the Yankees order, Bucky Dent, most her favorite shortstop of Red Sox fans everywhere. On the bump tonight for the New York Yankees will be Ed Figueroa. And the Browns will send Ray Culp out to the mound. And this will be game one of a four-game set. In real life, the Blue Jays beat the Yankees 5-1 to one on this date. Uh, Dave LaManchette got the win. Ed Figueroa took the loss. So the Brownies will try and uh, live up to that. And the Blue Jays actually split this four-game series with the uh, Yankees in real life. And at this point of the season... The uh, win today brought the Red Sox to 6-5. and five. Uh, Brown's already ahead of that, so we will see uh, their shooting to go to 8-3 and three today. So with that, the formalities are out of the way, and we are ready to play some ball. And let's roll. Figure over to Tobin. It would help if I roll the right dice. And that's going to be a ground ball to second base. Randolph takes care of that one down. Frank Ellerby up. And Ellerby, that's another ground ball down to Randolph. Two quick outs for the Yankees. The Browns will be, uh, as I said, tested today. This is the team they have to beat in the East. And four and a seven, that'll be a ground ball to second base and X. And Willie down at second base is a two. And that's going to be a ground out. So Randolph takes care of the side himself. And we head to the bottom of the first inning, a rather easy inning for Figueroa. No score in this one. And Ray Culp comes out, gets his warm up for the Browns. Mick the Quick steps in, ready to lead it off for the Yankees. And they're hoping to get out quickly on the Browns today. And pitch is 4 and 9, and that's going to be a fly ball to left field. So Williams takes care of that for the Brownies. Batting second, great Yankee catcher Thurman Munson. Tragically, only uh, one season away from a fatal plane crash. And six and five, and Munson's going to fly out to center. Baby Doll takes care of that. So Colt matching Figueroa, pitch for pitch, batter for batter. 
Two and a seven to Reggie, and Reggie, that's a possible home run. He cranks that deep into right field, and it is off the top of the wall. Reggie's going to round first, and he'll be into second base with a stand-up double. So Mr. October showing he can do it in April, and the Yankees have the game's first base runner. And Chris Shambliss, first baseman, will come up with Reggie in scoring position. Culp gets a sign. Here's the pitch. And two and a five will be a ground ball down to second base. And McManus takes care of that. So the Yankees get a hit. Leave a runner in scoring position. We're through one, zero, zero. And the last thing I am expecting in this one is a pitcher's duel. So we will see... Uh, how long these guys throwing goose eggs last. Top of the second inning, Ken Williams ready to lead it off against Figueroa. Figgy has a sign for Munson. And four and an eight, and this is a hard hit ball into left field, and that's gonna fall, rattle around in the corner, and Williams doing what the Browns do best, and that's chugging into third base with a leadoff triple here in the second. And the triple, the most exciting play in baseball, and still, back in 1922, somewhat more prevalent than the home run, though the home run was surging. Baby Doll Jacobson up now, three and a seven, and first roll off the hitter's cards, and Jacobson comes through, and we have our first run of the game as he drives a single up the middle, and Williams will score, and it is 1-0 Browns. So there goes the uh, half of the pitcher's duel. Six and a nine, and McManus. And he's going to get a hold of that one and drive that into the gap. And he's going to come in with a double. Runners advance two. So Figueroa feeling the wrath of the Brownies' bats. Three straight hits to start the second inning, and Hank Severide, the catcher, who is off to a great start, probably the biggest surprise in this order, even though he did hit 321 in 1922. Sevy waits for the pitch, and four and a nine. That's going to be another hard hit ball, and Severide back to back doubles. And that will plate two, and the Yankees find themselves in a 3-0 deficit here in the top of the second inning. Two RBI double for Severide, still nobody out. And Munson comes out to settle Figueroa down. They have things straight, and Munson back behind the plate, the pitch to Collins. Two and a five, struck him out. So whatever Munson said did the trick there. As Figgy deals the bender to get Collins. And Wally Gerber, ninth place batter, will come up. The shortstop steps in. Pitch from Figgy. And that's going to be a single. And that will be fielder's choice. Severide is a 10, and he's not going to chance it. He'll stay at third base. As the Brownies do not want to run themselves out of a already good inning, potentially big inning, as we're back to the top of the order for Jack Tobin. One down, Figueroa sets deals. And six and a 12, that'll be a fly ball to right field. And on that, runner on third will score. So sack fly as Severi comes home. And I know we're not playing... Uh, Super advanced, but the Yankees outfield had dismal arms. That was probably the biggest weakness of this team was outfield defense. So the sack fly to right there and two outs. Brownies now up 4-0 and Frank Ellerby up. Figueroa pitches. And four and a nine, and he gets racked again. And Ellerby, of all people, drives that one into the gap. And he's going to pull into second with a double. Uh, two outs. Gerber, he'll score on a one to 16. He's going for it. And he gets gunned down at the plate. And just as I said, the weak arms. But Roy White comes through and rifles a throw to Munson to catch Gerber trying to score, fortunately. 
And that gets the Yankees out of the inning, and it was a disastrous inning. As the Brownies get six hits, play four runs, and we head to the bottom of the second inning. Our score, St. Louis four, New York Yankees zero. And they are definitely looking to emulate what the Blue Jays did to the Yankees on this day. And Lou Pinella now will come back out. And Ray Colt, confident now with a big lead, is set to deliver. Pitch to Pinella. And four and a seven struck him out. So Colt feeling his oats. Fans Pinella, who heads back to the dugout disgusted. Greg knows the batter, the pitch. And struck him out, back-to-back -back K's. K is for Culp, and he is setting the Yankees down on strikes. Roy White steps in, 2-9. That's going to be another strikeout, so Culp strikes out the side. Feeling the heat. He's got the fan going as the Yankees go down in order again in the second. Six up. I'm sorry, one hit given up by Culp, but still... Two innings are in the books, and it is 4-0 Brownies, and the Yankees are in early trouble here. Figueroa is going to come back out on the mound, and the meat of the St. Louis order starts this off with George Sisler. Sisler grounded out to second his first time up. Figgy the pitch, and he's going to lead this one off with a single. And we might have some early action going down in the Yankees' bullpen, and we are going to. And the Yankees are summoning Gil Patterson. Spot starter and long reliever, and he's going to start warming up. And Sisler on first base. He will try and steal on a roll of six or less. He's going, Munson. So double A, one to 17, minus three for Munson's defense. One to 14, Sisler has this, and he's in there ahead of the, ahead of the uh, throw from Munson. Stolen base. And yet again, a runner in scoring position for the Browns. And Ken Williams started the second inning onslaught with a triple. He steps in. 6-10, and that's a fly ball X to center field. Make the quick after this one. And he is a three. And 18 and a three. And roll 20-sided die again. And again. Mick running, and again. Still running, 15. And that's going to be a single advance, too. So after all that, he cannot get to it. And that is run number five as Williams drives in Sisler. And the Yankees right now and Ed Figueroa are shell-shocked. And again, he has to face two batters before he can be relieved. So he'll have to pitch to Baby Doll. Five and an eight and pops him up. Shambliss puts that away. So one down, and that buys Ed a temporary reprieve as Marty McManus steps up, and McManus doubled his first time up. And four and a six walks him. And that is going to be it for Figueroa. Billy Martin has seen enough, and Gil Patterson's going to come on. And definitely was not expecting this result, as Figueroa only lasts two and a third inning. And he gives up eight hits. Thus far, five runs all earned. He's still responsible. Uh, walks one and strikes out one. No home runs, but... They tattooed him without the uh, benefit of the long ball. So now Marty McManus on at first base. And down at second base is Ken Williams. Hank Severide up. Severide doubled in two in the second inning. And the pitch, one and seven. And that's the route continues as Severide doubles. 
And that is a potential 1 to 14, and McManus is going to try and score from first on this. They're piling it on now, and he is in. So another two-run double for Severide. And the Yankee Stadium faithful, who uh, were uh, haughtily and somewhat arrogantly waiting to hand these upstarts from the past a uh, lesson in humility, are humbled and quiet, something that does not happen in New York much, as the Brownies now lead this 7-0, to zero, and we're only in the top of the third. Patterson set to face Collins, once a former Yankee himself, 3-6, and a six, and he walks him. So it just does not get any better. Wally Gerber up. Still only one down. Five and a ten. And that's a ground ball X to third. Nettles is a one. One redeeming factor there. And one and a nine. And Nettles flips it over to Randolph. Back to Shambliss. And they get out of the inning. A five, four, three double play. And things come to a merciful ending here in the top of the third, but not before the Brownies plate three more runs on the strength of three hits, a couple of walks. And we're heading to the bottom of the third inning. Our score, St. Louis 7, and the rather shocked Bronx Bombers 0. So Ray Colt... Coming out with an even more comfortable lead here. And he thinks things bode well for him to pick up yet another victory in this 1977 campaign. Willie Randolph set to lead it off. The Yankees have been stymied thus far. And that's a ground out to second base. McManus takes care of that one down. <clears throat> even the Yankees posture. Walking back to the dugout shoulder slump. One and a ten. The pitch to Dent pops him up. And his counterpart's going to take care of that. Wally Gerber, two down. <clears throat> Back to the top of the order. Mick the Quick, trying to light a spark here. One and a ten, and pops him up to McManus. So Culp, he's out there pitching like Cy Young. And we are through three innings as the Yankees go down in order yet again. And the score 7-0. Browns with a commanding lead. And Jack Tobin back to the top of the order. It's the fourth inning. Tobin up for the third time already today. Here we go. Five and a seven. And Tobin leads it off with a walk. It just does not get any better. He will try and steal on a roll of three or less. He stays put. Actually, I'm going to take the auto steal rule off now with a seven run lead per my house rules. Frank Keller be up. Four eight, and that's going to be another walk. Yeah, there's going to be more action in the Yankees bullpen here. And Kenny Holtzman is getting in some warm-up tosses. Part-time starter, winding down his career here with the Yankees. And at this point, mop-up duty for him if he comes in. And he'll probably be asked to finish the game to save the other arm. Sisler up. Two and a five, and that's a fly ball through right field. Runners hold, so White takes care of Sisler. One down for Patterson. Ken Williams up. Williams, he's two for two. Two runs scored. A run knocked in. Has a triple. Four and a seven. And he walks. And Patterson has walked. The base is loaded. And this one wasn't ugly enough. It's getting disfigured now. Base is loaded. One out. Baby Doll Jacobson at the plate. Three and a five. And that's a line out to third. Runner scamper back to the bag safely, two outs. So big, big batter here as Patterson, if the Yankees have any hope to come back, which is slim right now. They can't give up any more runs here. Six and a nine and struck him out. So Patterson 
walks himself into a dilemma and strikes himself out of it. Brownies leave the bases loaded. We head to the bottom of the fourth, seven to zero. St. Louis with the lead, and Ray Culp, who has only given up one hit, has been stellar. Struck out the side in the second. Has set down seven straight Yankees since a two-out double by Reggie back in the first. And he will face Thurman Munson here as the fourth is underway. And that's going to be a ground ball back to him. He takes care of that himself over to Sisler. One three, one down. Reg, the only Yankee to do anything thus far, steps in, Glowers, Reggie Glowers at everyone. 6-10, and that's going to be a single for Reggie. So Jackson, the only uh, Yankee to get any good wood on any of Culp's pitches, and in the post-game press conference, I'm sure he will be the first to tell you about it, runner on first base. He's not going to try and steal with this deficit. Three and a five, and struck him out. So Culp, his fourth strikeout as Chandless goes down. Two down, Sweet Lou Pinella up. And Pinella with Kansas City once made the final out of a game and was so disgusted with himself, he continued running down the right field line into the bullpen, out of the ballpark, and jogged all the way home in his uniform, so the story goes. Two and a five, and that's going to be a ground ball to shortstop. Hopefully he does not leave the stadium here, as that's a third out. And the Yankees, or should I say Reggie, gets his second hit. And we're through four. It is still 7-0. Browns in a route. So to lead off the fifth, we will have Hank Severide, the Brownies catcher, Seve, his third time up. He's got two doubles. He's got four RBIs and a run score. He is one of many POG candidates early in this one. Two and a four, and he's on again with a single. So the Brownies tearing the horsehide cover off the ball have yet again a leadoff runner. They went down in order in the first, and that's been about it for Yankees pitching in terms of success. One to six to Collins, and struck him out. Collins goes down swinging for the second time. One down. Wally Gerber up. Severide the leadoff first pitch, and that's going to be a split chance. Possible double rips it, and that'll be a single instead. Runners advance two. So over to third goes Severide, and Gerber has his second hit of the day. Really, who does not have a hit in the Brownies lineup this far? Uh, actually, let me check. Only Pat Collins has not, uh, he's reached base on a walk, but has not gotten a hit yet. All other eight starters have hits. So one down, top of the order, Jack Tobin up. Patterson in garbage time, three and a nine, and pops him up. Randolph waits under that, puts it away, two down. Frank Ellerby, the weak link in this powerful Browns uh, lineup, and 6-5, and struck him out. So once again, Patterson gives up a couple of hits, leaves runners at the corners, but does not give up any more runs. And we're heading to the bottom of the fifth inning, 7-0 Brownie still. It's George Sisler in the heart of the Browns lineup, sits poised for the sixth inning. Colt back out on the mound. And the Yankees are going to send up Nettles, White, and Randolph here in the bottom of the fifth. Craig steps in, waits for the pitch. And six and a nine, and the left he has a single. So Colt may be letting up just a tad here. Maybe he feels bad for the Yankees. Roy wide up, medals on first. Six four, that's going to be a fly ball to Baby Doll in center. Gloves that. Nice routine chance, one down. Louis Randolph up, Nettles gets his lead. The pitch, one six. And Nettle, or Randolph will draw a walk, Nettles down to second. So 1977 Yankees, this was their second straight pennant. 
and got them back into the World Series and on a winning track after an embarrassing uh, showing against the Reds in the 76 Fall Classic. Bucky Dent, who would be a hero a year from now, is now up to the plate. Two on, one down, the pitch. Can he do it again? Nope, pops him up. And second time he's popped up to his counterpart, Gerber. Two down, two on, top of the order. Mick the Quick. Man of the unique saunter out in center field for the Yankees. And that's a 3-9. And that's going to be ground ball down to first base. Sisler takes care of that himself. So the Yankees manage another hit, leave a couple of base runners on, but they can still not crack the scoring column against Culp. We're through five innings, 7-0 Browns. And the Brownies here are sending a message to the rest of the American League East that they are for real. And they did not travel all this uh, way through space and time not to give a legitimate run at the uh, division championship and the pennant. So Sisler leads it off against Patterson, who will be in his last inning to work regardless. Two and a three, and that's a ground ball to Randolph. So one down, Ken Williams up. <laughs> Williams has been on base every time, triple single walk, scored two runs, driven one in, three, not, or three and a ten. That's going to be a ground ball to first again. Chambliss gloves at himself, puts it away, two down. Patterson making it look easy, which it has not been, and that'll be a ground ball down to shortstop. Bucky F and Dent over to Chambliss, and we have a rare three up, three down inning for the Browns. First time that's happened since the opening stanza. And we head to the bottom of the sixth inning, and the Yankees in a huge hole, seven to zero. And Kenny Holtzman, he's gonna be in for mop-up duty for the Yanks. When play resumes in the seventh for the Browns. Meanwhile, they're going to try and get a little rally going here. As Thurman Munson, the dower one, steps in. 4-5, and that's going to be a ground ball down to second base. And the Brownies' defense, even on rolls on the pitcher's card today, has not really been tested. Reggie Jackson, 2-2. Two for two. Has two-thirds of the Yankees hits at this point, and that's a five and a four. Not this time. That'll be a fly ball X to center, and Baby Doll out there is a one. And 15, and that is going to be an out. Baby Doll gets to that. No perfect day at the plate for Mr. October, and that's two down now. Chris Chambliss up. Pitch to Chambliss, and that's a 5-5 double nickels. That'll be a fly ball to right field. And over to take care of that one is Jack Tobin. Another three up, three down inning. We're through six, and Colt is cutting through the Yankees' potent lineup like a knife through hot butter. As we head to the top of the seventh inning, Ken Holtzman on the mound now for the Yankees. And let's just close the book on Patterson. He was shaky, but he was not horrific like uh, Figgy was. So Patterson, he ends up going three and two-thirds innings. And he gave up three hits. Uh, did not give up any runs that he was credited with, but tacked another two onto Figgy's ledger with a uh, two-run double. He surrendered to Severide, the first batter he faced in the third. So three hits, no runs. And he was a little wild. He walked the bases loaded in the fourth, had a total of four walks in his time in there. And he struck out three. So that closes the book on Patterson as Holtzman ready to deal now. McManus in the batter's box set to lead it off for the Brownies. And here we go. And it'll be a ground ball down to shortstop. X chance and Bucky Dent is a two. One of the better fielding Yankees. And that'll be ground out. He gets to that. Nice pickup. Whips it over to Chandless. One down. McManus gone and Hank Severide 
Seve has driven in four of the runs. He is perfect at the play. Three, three for three. The pitch, four and a six. And rips that one. And that's a nice stop by... Uh, did he get to it? He did. Nice stop by Willie Randolph. Snow cones that, or that would have been Severide's fourth hit of the day. Instead, an L4, two down. <clears throat> Pat Collins, he's the only Brown without a hit today. Yeah, not that we should feel bad for him, but Holtzman deals. And that's going to be a four and a seven, not anymore, as Kenny. Almost like on demand, gives up the single to Collins, and every Brown in the lineup has a hit today against this Yankee staff. Wally Gerber up, two out, one on. Four and a six, and that's going to be a potential single. Randolph ranges, though, and plucks that out of the air. Second time he's done that this inning. The Brownies do get another hit. But do not score, and we are through six and a half, seven zero Browns, and we are at the old ball game. It's too early for me to sing that, so we get spoken word today. And Colt breezing along, three hitter going through six, and he will face Sweet Lou Pinella. <clears throat> I say too early to sing like I have a Whitney Houston voice or something like that. Probably, I'm sure all of you who watch this will be grateful it's too early for me to sing. As Pinella steps in, five and an eight, and Culp pops him up to first base. Sisler puts that one away, one down. Ray is on the mound dealing aces and eights for the Browns, and Craig Nettle steps in. And three and an eight, and Greg pops that up to Sisler. So two quick outs handled by Sisler. Roy White up. Nobody on the pitch. And three and a ten, ground ball down to shortstop. Gerber up with it over to first. And yet again, three up, three down for the Yankees. We're through seven. And it does not look like any type of miraculous comeback is going to occur on this fine April day, folks, as the Brownies lead this 7-0. to zero. We head to the 8th. Jack Tobin, top of the order. And Tobes. Well, actually, I had, Tobin doesn't have a hit either. He uh, is 0 for 2. He has an RBI and a sacrifice fly back in the 2nd, and he walked in the 4th, but he has not hit safely. I'm sure I just made... Uh, a case for him to get that, but nope, lines it out right at Willie Randolph. So Tobin will end up with the collar, barring another huge inning by the Browns. And he will be the only one. Frank Ellerby up. Six and a seven, and he singles. That's Ellerby's second hit of the day. Browns are being kind, not looking to steal here with the huge lead. George Sisler up. Playing the game the right way. Six and an eight, and Rotro. Sisler rips this one, and that's going to be into the right center field gap, and that's going to be a double. And Ellerby is 11 to score. He's going to hold up at third. With only one out, don't want to make the second out at home plate. He's going to leave him set for Ken Williams now. Two runners in scoring position. Holtzman needs to deal. Four and a nine, and that'll be a ground ball down to second base, but that's going to get a run home as Randolph has to range to his left. And Sisler over to third. Ellerby comes in to score, and that's 4-3 with the RBI. And that's Williams' second RBI of the day. It's 8-0 now, Brownies. But there is two down. Runner on third. Baby Doll up to the plate. Three and a six. And Baby Doll. He's going to bring home Sisler. And my dogs are going crazy over that. They're saying, nah, mercy. Mercy on these Yankees. Not going to happen. Marty McManus up. Three hits this inning, two in already. The pitch to McManus from Holtzman, four and a 12, ground ball down to second base X. 
And Willie is a two. Can he come up with this? And he cannot, and that's a single runner's advance one. So skips off Willie's glove, and the score gives a benefit of a doubt to McManus, and Severide is going to come up now. Two outs, two on, here comes the pitch, two and a seven. And that's a potential single, rips it, and Nettles lunges, he cannot get to that. And single, runners advance one, the sacks are loaded now. And Severide is four for five on the day. He is having a whale of the day at the plate, who isn't in this Browns lineup, not named Jack Tobin. And Pat Collins has a chance to really make this ugly. Here comes a pitch. One and a nine, flies out to center field. The Rivers camps under that, and the inning is over. But the Brownies, they tack on two more runs on the strength of five hits off of Holtzman. Luckily not solid. They were playing station to station there with those last three singles. But we head to the bottom of the eighth inning. Our score now, 9-0 Browns. And this is just an unexpected result. And I'm sure the Yankees might have been taking their uh, counterparts from 1922, or their opponents from 1922, lightly. These boys can play. You're in for a series here. Colt now, still working on the three hitter to Willie Randolph, two and a seven, and that's gonna be a fly ball to left field. Ken Williams puts that away. One down. Roy White, or Bucky Dent, sorry, the batter. And Dent, four and an eight, and that's gonna be a potential double. Nope, single for Bucky. So only the fourth hit given up by Culp to this mighty Yankees lineup. We're back to the top of the order. Mickey Rivers up. Bucky with the lead. Rivers waits for the pitch and pops him up. So even when they get someone on, they can't do anything with it. Munson now two outs, runner on first. And actually only once in this game, I'm sorry, twice has a Yankee runner even occupied second base. One and a nine, and that'll be a ground ball down to Gerber. They'll put it over to Sisler, and the Yankees gone again. They get a hit, but strand the runner. We're heading to the last frame, and it is still 9-0 Browns in a rout. This was a fight. It would have been stopped as Wally Gerber... Set to lead it off here in the top of the ninth inning as the Browns will get through their order for the sixth time. And five and a seven. And that is going to be a single. So the hits keep on coming. Gerber on in top of the order for Jack Tobin. And I did not think he would get another shot, but he's going to. So Jack Tobin, the only Brown hitter still on the schneid. He is 0 for 3, has walked and has a sack fly, but every other time he has been put out by Willie Randolph. 2 and a 6, and there you go. He breaks the uh, skid, and that's another single, runner advance 1. So Tobin joins the hit parade, and now every hitter in the Browns lineup has, a, has hit safely in this one. Holtzman deals to Ellerby. And struck him out. So Holtzman with a big K there. One down as he's trying now just to keep the Browns from reaching double digits. George Sisler up. Sis tonight is two for five. Scored a couple of runs. Has a stolen base. 6-6. Six, six. And that's going to be a single runner's advance two. So double digits are not going to be prevented as Sisler has his first RBI. His third hit, and Ken Williams now runners at the corner. Holtzman's just going to have to ride this out. Yankees are not going to waste any more arms on this blowout. Four and a nine, and that'll be a ground ball down to second base. And again, Randolph has to range. He's not going to be able to get the put out, and that's the second 4-3 that has resulted in an RBI for Williams. As it's now 11-0 Browns, as Sisler crosses the plate, and... I'm sorry, Tobin crosses the plate, Sisler to second. 
Baby Doll Jacobson and Holtzman trying to put a merciful end to this for the Yankees and three and a seven. Not going to let it happen. Assist is going to come around and score as Baby, Baby Doll with the RBI single. 12 0 Browns. Marty McManus now. And three and a five, and it's another single. And Jacobson, 15, he's just going to try and get to third base, 17, because there's two outs, he's in there. Running wild. And Hank Severide, runners on first and third. Holtzman still pitching, five and a two, and finally a ground ball down to Chambliss. He will take that himself as the Browns send eight more to the plate. Second inning in a row they've done that. And they score three more runs on five more hits. They've gotten ten hits off Holtzman in the last two innings. Crazy. They are just ruthless, pouring it on. It's 12-0 as we head to the bottom of the ninth inning. This game is in the bag. The fat lady is singing. Holtzman is heading to the showers. The fans, most of which have long left. Those who stick around are the same type of people who stop and stare at car wrecks and derail trains, because that's what this is, a total derailment of the Yankees. And Reggie facing Culp. And that's going to be a 5-7 ground ball X. And Manis is a one. Three and a one gets to that. And Jackson is gone. One down. It is a tale of uh, two scorecards here looking at the score sheet. The Yankees is pristine. Neat. Lots of outs. The Browns looks like a case of the chicken pox. There's so many runs on here. One and a seven to Chambliss. And Chambliss is going to get on base. Rips that one, and that's down in the right field corner. He's going to end up on second base with a double. So that is the fifth hit that Colt has given up. Now just looking to uh, get on the scoreboard. One and a seven to Sweet Lou, and that's going to be a single. And Chambliss is a 12. Williams Field and Chambliss is going to try and score, and he's gunned down at the plate. Of course he is. Insult to injury as Pinella with the single, but the Yankees still cannot crack the scoreboard as Ken Williams comes up throwing, and Chambliss thrown out at home. Six and a nine to Nettles, and that would have put in a run. I had not gambled there. And Pinella, 1 to 13 with two outs. He's just going to stop at second base. He's defeated. So, poor third base coaching cost the Yankees at least some uh, shred of dignity. They could have scored a run. Two and a six to Roy White, and that's a line out down to Ellerby, and that's the game, folks. So, the Yankees. Put on a minor rally, get a couple hits here in the ninth, but they leave a runner on, and Chambliss is thrown out trying to score. So your final score in a runaway, the Brownies 12, Yankees 0. And let's just tally the damage here. Holy crap. <laughs> the Browns. 12 runs on 22 hits, 22, no errors, the Yankees zero runs on six hits, and the Browns come into the Bronx and they absolutely perform a subway mugging of the Yankees in game one of this four game set. Ray Culp, he goes a distance with that six hitter, and his final numbers, Nine innings, six hits. He walks one. And strikes out four. 
So the complete game shutout for Culp and player of the game. So many uh, Browns to choose from, but uh, got to go with the um, backstop Hank Severide. Now let's see. Yeah, we had a number of batters uh, with obviously three hits. So we'll go with Severide. He, uh, he really got this route going. He was four for six. Uh, two doubles, a run scored, and four RBIs. So Hank Severide, player of the game for the Brownies. And game one of this series is over. And again, a absolute massacre in the Bronx. Final score, Browns 12, Yankees 0. And we will be back for game two. Until then, keep rolling for the fences. Happy Monday. Have a good day, all.